Hey everyone, welcome to another video in this particular playlist. In this video, we'll be talking about Spark Structure Streaming Syncs and Forage. So Syncs is nothing but it's a target, right? Where you want to write the data. I have the same Spark program and there are different Syncs that is available. You have console sync. I think we have seen this. So if you want to just uh, put the output in a console to just uh, have a look into the log, you can do that. You have a file sync. You can write to different files like JSON, CSP, Parquet. You have Kafka sync. You can write to Kafka. Similarly, you have different syncs available here. So we'll be talking about some of them in this particular video. So first, memory sync. So this is more like for exploring the stream that you are reading, right? So let me run this particular program and let me show you what does the output look like. So I have uh, like I, I've cre I'm creating checkpoint location. I'm defining, okay, the format for the sync should be memory and I'm giving query name because we'll be using this particular query name and I'm just writing as a like uh, complete mode let me start this okay so the stream has started right so you are getting the streaming data now what you can do is you can just run this as a as batch query right so you can just do a like select start from that particular streaming query that we've given so if you see that you are given some name that same name you can use it and you can just run like this right so this is more like an exploration and if you want to write uh, maybe write some transformation here just to check like okay uh, if i am doing the transformation correctly so you can do all those uh, testing here right so that's a memory sync sometimes it is useful to just see the data on the real time you have a kafka sync that means that whatever suppose uh, you have another kafka topic you can write the data from spark structure streaming to kafka right how to do that, do that? first thing first we have to convert uh, like uh, in a producer application, you convert this, your message as key and value, right? The same way you have to convert this as key and value. So for key, I'm mentioning the item as key. For the, for the key value, I'm creating a struct element and just I'm converting as a to JSON. So I'm converting this as a value. So how does it look like? So if I just show you this Kafka DF, you'll have a data frame look like, um, so this is how the Kafka DM will look like. You have a key, you have a value as JSON. Uh, to write this in Kafka, this is very simple. You have to do a write stream. The format should be Kafka. You have to define the bootstrap server and the topic. So I have, I have created a new, new topic that is I'm naming this shopping items aggregates and you are defining the checkpoint location and what's the jazz config, config right so if you if you have seen my producer configuration producer application there we have used the same type of configuration so this is all it takes to write from spark structure streaming so it's very similar to how we have written a python application for producing the data so let me run this so this is the topic that we have created in Confluence, shopping items aggregates. And if you see that it will start producing the data, right? This is, this is one data it is showing. As soon as this particular program starts, it will start producing the data to that particular topic. This is all about uh, this uh, Kafka sync. Then we have a Delta sync. What does this mean is, suppose you want to write data to a Delta table, right? To, for Delta sync, it's very simple. All you have to do is uh, you have to define a two table and define the table name here. So I've already started this particular stream. To check the data, you can go here in catalog you'll see in the default schema, you have a parse table. So you see that I am seeing the sample data. And so this particular uh, like two table only works with append. It doesn't work with update mode, right? So if you want to just up, uh, maybe update the records, which is which is coming as updated one, you can't do that. So it will show uh, uh, that this particular source does not support update, right? So this is where um, there is a limitation using two table. That's why this forage sync is coming into picture, right? So what is forage sync, right? 
So for each sync allows custom logic to be applied to each micro batch of data. It's used for custom data syncs. You can use like uh, create transformation per batch and you can also do a lot of advanced processing, right? Suppose you want to write uh, combined with batch API for complex operation like upsets in Delta tables. Some use case for for each batch is if, if you want to write to custom syncs, right? This is a very popular use case. So if you want to write the data to different databases which doesn't support like natively, you can use for each batch. You, you want to handle complex updates, performing much operations, so we'll see how we are doing this. And if you want to implement some batch specific logic, you can use for each batch. So this is mostly you use whenever you have some complex logic or if you have a sync which is not supported, you can use for each batch. Let's see how do we do that. Okay, to showcase this forage ink, what I did was I created one more table. Uh, I've created item counts table as a delta sync. So I have used two table to create this table. What we can do is, let me interrupt this. Let me showcase this first. Suppose I want to run this in output mode, right? This item counts, whatever data frame. And I want to update whenever there are any updates on the item count, I want to update that in Delta. To do that, what you can do is you can use for each batch sync and you can define a function here. And what this particular function will tell like what to do. That's something you can define as function like this, right? So I'm defining this as, as a function. I'm defining this is the batch data frame. So every batch you'll get this batch data and you'll get a batch ID like zero one. Then I'm uh, I'm mentioning this at this particular table is a delta table and this is the user merge that we do, right? So if there are any items that is matching, then I'm just increasing the count. And if there are no match, then I'm just inserting this record. So this is the usual way that how we do a Delta merge. So uh, so you see that how powerful it is, right? So you define it for each thing, you define the function and in, the, in this particular function, you can define any business logic that you want to apply, right? You want to call some API, you want to write it to post case or do any fancy stuff here. Just to show you how the history will look like, so you can define like this Skype history. And if you just see that how it will show you, it will show you like on that particular table, what are the operation that happened, right? So if you see that on this, this particular user did a merge. And if you just go to operation parameters, you can see what, what, what the predicate and what the matching predicates is defining, what the uh, action type that you are defining, right? And if you just scroll uh, towards the right, you will see that operation matrix, this is where it will show you like how much data is written. If you just scroll down, it will show you a number of output rows. That means that this particular operation had like inserted five new records, right? So I think this is all I wanted to share in this particular video. So what I'll say is just um, use this particular notebook. I'll be sharing the link for this. So I'll, you can check in this particular video description for the link of this uh, notebook. You just import it in your workspace. You have the Spark producer program here. So you can run this and you can, you can just play with this particular scene. I think that's all I have for today and I'll see in the next one.